All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the channel for the final round of the season's tips. Now, yes, I did miss last week's tips video. Pretty much just took a week off of YouTube. Just woke up on Sunday morning last weekend and just thought, gee, I really just cannot even look at YouTube right now. So decided to delete the app, just took a week off, had a mental refresh. I uh, wasn't sure when I was gonna come back, but here I am, uh, one week later, doing the final round of the season. Gonna push on because there is a finals footy just around the corner. The season's really getting exciting and there is plenty to talk about. Because it is the business end of the season, I'm gonna do my best to really crack on and make some good content around the finals and the finals preview. So keep an eye out for that sort of stuff coming on the channel over the next four to six weeks or however long is left. Now, as I record this, it is still round 17. It's half time between Collingwood and the Gold Coast Suns in the final game of round 17. So I don't actually have the updated uh, footy tip rankings, but it doesn't really matter because Julian is well and truly a cut above the rest. He is four tips ahead of the next best with a total score of 108 and a margin of 495 with just one round remaining. It looks like Julian has got this in the bag. So anyway, let's get into the ladder predictor. And as I said, there's still a game to go. Collingwood are up by six at halftime and I will just back in and double down on my pretty game tip. I think I tipped him by... Well, actually, I didn't tip by any much at all because I didn't do a video, but I did tip Collingwood, and let's say they continue and win the game by six points because they're currently up by six points. So let's take a look at what the ladder should be, unless I get that tip wrong. By the time this video comes out, we'll know. Uh, but let's have a look. Port Adelaide, Brisbane, Richmond, Geelong are settled as that top four. It's going to take a fair bit to displace um, any one of those teams out of the top four. West Coast is the only likely challenger to that. But it looks like we have our top four to go into the finals. West Coast, Collingwood, St. Kilda, and the Bulldogs make up that rest of that eight. Just outside, our team's really hoping results go their way in the final round. Melbourne, GWS, and Fremantle have bobbed up to 11th with some good form. Carlton in 12th after a disappointing loss last week. Essendon have slumped to 13th and really starting to find their level. Only won one of their last nine or something like that. Gold Coast in 14th. Overall, a pretty good season, but you'd have to say it's a fairly big drop from where they were projected to go early in the rounds, but we did kind of expect that. 96% is actually very healthy, and that's probably the KPI they'll look at with the most satisfaction out of all that. Sydney, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and Adelaide are our bottom four, but we do have an interesting battle for the wooden spoon in the final round of the season. Which team can lose by more? No, it will take a win by Adelaide or North losing by 80+, plus, which probably won't happen, uh, but still something as a little interesting side story to keep an eye on. All right, let's get into the first game. You've got North Melbourne versus West Coast on the Thursday night at Metricon Stadium. North Melbourne, of course, coming off a 64-point loss to the Purple Flogs down the road. I'm just kidding. Fremantle playing some really, really good football, and I've talked about it in the past, and I think they are starting to see the fruits of a painful rebuild, it has to be said. Some of the young guys I've got coming through are looking really, really good. Uh, so in summary, I don't think that's a massive indictment on North Melbourne. I think Fremantle... If this season had gone on for another eight weeks or so, like next year, what are they talking about, 28-round season? I think Fremantle would probably find themselves in the eight based on their current momentum. Uh, but North, really a season that has been, you know, a real write-off in a sense. I think they're much better than what 17th suggests. Their last decent performance was a one-point loss to the Lions. Since then, they've been done by Collingwood, and then there's a real low light in a 10-goal loss to the Suns, and now a 10-goal loss or 11-goal loss to Fremantle. This season is one they probably just can't wait to end. And let's face it, if they were playing Adelaide this week, on current form, Adelaide would trounce them, so they'd be lucky that they aren't facing this week. Coming up against a side that is limping on one leg into this final series. They'll be praying, they'll be very, very pumped for that pre-finals buy to get some injured soldiers back. I don't know if other fans will really quite understand how big that win on Thursday night against the Saints last week really was when you consider the outs. Not a single player from the 2018 Grand Final who won a clearance, so pretty much the entire midfield was out for that game. McGovern goes down at halftime, coming up against the top six side who really, really should have won the game. West Coast had about six players beat the Saints single-handedly. 
Um, and one of them was McGovern, who finished at halftime anyway. So the real character-building win. That is the sort of win that will be forgotten by most supporters of other clubs. But I think it will live long in the memory of Eagles fans. And is giving the Eagles a nice little lift of momentum after a bad loss to the Dogs. Where they can go in knowing that they're probably going to secure a home final, get a couple weeks rest, and get a lot of players back. They're in a good spot. I think their frame of mind will be good for this game. And I don't think it'll be a smashing because the Eagles do not like Metricon, or Metricon Stadium, rather. But I'm expecting a four goals Eagles win. St. Kilda GWS is the final before the finals. Like I said, St. Kilda, really poor performance for them to not beat the Eagles. I don't say I don't think they played badly as such. But finals are on the line coming up against a side that plays poorly in those conditions and had, you know, bloody 10 players or only nine premiership players from 2018 in the side. That shows how inexperienced that side was. The entire 2017 draft class played in that game, for God's sake. Some absolute spuds on the Eagles list played in that game and St. Kittle couldn't get the job done. And I hate to say this, I don't want to rag on St. Kilda, but when Saints fans wonder why people don't quite give them the same respect as other teams, that performance really underlines why. It's not that they're a bad side, but there's a clear gap between the top five sides. St. Kilda don't quite have that edge yet. This game for them is another mini final. They had the chance to lock up finals and they'll have to do it against GWS who will be playing in the exact same circumstances. Obviously just dropped. Stephen Canelio uh, was it last week. Um, which you know has copped some criticism, and I agree. I think it was Wayne Carey, maybe it wasn't Wayne Carey, but somebody said, you know, if you're going to drop Cornelio, don't do it now while it's humiliating him right before the finals. It's not going to have the same time to take the effect. This is when you need your captain to lift your side over the line and push into finals when the morale of the group can't be that high right now. But again, it's going to be it's a hard battle to pick between these two sides, who both have had poor performances in recent weeks. GWS got done by the Crows, who obviously aren't playing terribly, and got done by the Demons in a mini-final right now. It makes them hard to back. But St. Kilda are also going off their recent month, equally hard to back, with a 14-point win over Hawthorne, their best performance in some time. I hate to do this. I do like St. Kilda. I genuinely hope they make the finals. I like GWS too, but I will be going for St. Kilda in this game. But I'm going to back the experienced side... Oh, like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say GWS have too much quality to let this slip. I could be wrong. I backed them against the Demons as well. I'm going to say they win them by 14 points. Next up is an easier one. I wouldn't say a mini final. Essendon have really dropped out of that uh, calculation <laughs> in recent months. I think they've won one of their last nine, as they said, and they've got a coach that's outgoing who made some explosive comments, basically said that Essendon fans are a little bit entitled. I'm paraphrasing him there, saying just because they're a big club doesn't mean they deserve to move up the ladder quickly. And he does have a bit of a point when you think about the hole that Essendon were in that he's navigated them through. Maybe he hasn't exceeded, but um, to be more or less sacked at the end of last year, which, you know, he was, let's face it. I can understand where he's coming from by lashing out. But again, it wasn't the most classy thing to say. As an outgoing coach, it just makes him look very bitter, which evidently he is. Now, the D is coming off a good win against the Giants last week. Uh, a win that really tested their mettle. I've been critical, and I'm not the only one who's been critical about their mindset this year, um, where they've really dropped their heads and played poorly in big games. And I know my, my boy Backyard Charizard has been very, very critical of the players along those similar lines. That being said, that win over GWS was a big step. They need to back it up this week. Thankfully for them, I think they have a lot more quality on the field than Essendon. And I must admit, at the start of the year when these two sides uh, were meant to play and the game was postponed, I was arguing the opposite. I thought Essendon looked stronger and Melbourne looked weaker. But the Bombers really have gone in that opposite direction since I made that point. So I will happily tip Melbourne this week. I think this one is a bit of a no-brainer. And I will be absolutely stunned if the D's lose this, and it would be the worst loss of the season. Next up, Adelaide and Richmond. Now, this is a game I really hope goes the Crows' way for West Coast-related reasons. Obviously, if the Crows win this, Richmond slip out of the top four, provided West Coast also win on Thursday night. So there's a bit going on in this one. And Adelaide, of course, playing some really good footy, trying to avoid a wooden spoon. Have they won a wooden spoon before? I'm not actually sure off the top of my head. Adelaide Crows are the best in the comments, can probably provide that answer for me. I did watch their first half against Carlton, and while it's hard to tell whether or not it was Carlton putting on a lack of pressure 
or if it was Adelaide playing really well, but their ball movement was slick. It was good to see some of their young stars really start to lift. Chase Jones impressed me with quite a number of good things that he did. For the first time all season, you can really start to see the future of Adelaide, which is, yeah, def as I said, not something you saw in the first half of the year. Starting to think Matthew Nix may have a good operation going because of the way they're playing, not just the fact that they're winning, but some of the quality of their ball movement was really encouraging. Now, Richmond, on the other hand, as far as I'm concerned, that was pretty much a grand final preview coming up against Geelong last week. And I think it's very fair to suggest that those two are the best teams in the competition that Richmond gave them an absolute bath. I guess Rowan out really sort of limited Geelong's avenues to goal, made them very Hawkins reliant. And Richmond predicted this. Does that make the difference between them winning and losing by five goals? Probably not. But I think that was a bit of a killer blow for the Cats, who are really expected to play better in that game. And it would be interesting to see whether that was an off day when they do eventually meet in the finals, which I'm convinced is going to happen. But you know, Richmond is just such a pro team. They looked a little tired against Fremantle, I thought. And I expected or was hoping, rather, for the Eagles' sake, that the Cats would take advantage of that. But Richmond pulled out one of their most compelling performances of the season. And while they don't particularly like Adelaide at Adelaide Oval off the top of my head, I do recall Adelaide smashing them there sometimes in recent years. This is a new Adelaide side with a new coach. Very, very different list. And as good a form as they're in, I can't possibly back them. I'm going to say Richmond, who are a clutch team, are going to win by 25 points and seal top four. Next up, Brisbane versus Carlton. A bit less riding on this game. Brisbane more or less have top two sewn up, as you can see on the live ladder. They're still in second spot despite Richmond winning. They did just enough to beat Sydney last week, even though Sydney gave them a little bit of a challenge there at times, I thought. Since I've made the last video, Harris Andrews has done his, what was his hammy or something like that. And he's, he's done a, a soft tissue injury and he is out for the foreseeable future. That being said, I don't necessarily think the Lions are broken without him. I've seen some people suggest that that is going to be a major killer blow. Um, and they are a side that has benefited from a good injury run or perhaps good injury management over the recent years. That being said, I think Brisbane will be fine. And even though this is more or less a dead rubber, I'm expecting them to put in another strong performance because frankly, they haven't actually had too many off days at all this season. Contrast that with Carlton, who are coming off probably their biggest off day of the year, coming up against the bottom place to Adelaide Crows last week. What was it? I think Adelaide kicked seven of the first eight goals or something like that off the top of my head and absolutely tore them apart. And this is a bit of a hollow feeling for them. I think there's been a lot of progress this year. They sit seven and nine with nearly 96%. And on paper, I think that is a fairly good improvement on last year. And that's exactly actually where I predicted they would finish at the start of the year with some encouraging finals-like performances, but not really enough to really challenge for that top eight spot. And that's exactly where they have settled. This is going to be a tough ask. Be beating Brisbane at the Gabba for any team is a tough ask. I'll be stunned if they win. I'm going to say Brisbane just get the job done and win by a comfortable three goals. Next up, we have Hawthorne and the Gold Coast at Adelaide Oval. Hawthorne enjoying or not really enjoying some time down at Adelaide Oval at the moment. Coming up against the Gold Coast Suns, who were in 14th. Uh, another bit of a dead rubber game. Hawthorne looking a bit cooked. We've seen some retirements come out. Burgoyne has signed on for an extra year, but you got Stratton, Retire, and Puapolo. You can start to see an increase in the transition. And I think you can't finish virtually... Well, they're going to finish bottom four and not push towards that transition towards youth. It'd be weird if they didn't. This is the time where people will jump on and get very critical about Hawthorne's list management over the course of the last five or so years, maybe the last four years. For a side that has a lot of aging stars, they haven't really invested that heavily into the youth. And I think that might change this year, particularly if they get a top three draft pick. If they don't trade it, who knows what's going to happen. I think trading is going to be weird this year with COVID and stuff and players wanting to go home to Victoria. I don't know. Are they going to less, be less likely? Who knows? But anyway, that's a tangent. Hawthorne playing horrible football. It can't be denied. Coming up in this Gold Coast, who have been undoubtedly better this season. I usually talk about the team's previous game, but at the moment, they are playing Collingwood. They're actually one point up, so I, I really could get that tip wrong, and that is really bad for Carl, uh, Collingwood if they lose that game. But Gold Coast obviously got a lot of young talent on the list. Not much to play for other than pride. And like I said, that 96% shows. Much like Brisbane in, what was it, 2017, 
where they'd finished around 13th or 14th or something like that, but had a percentage close to 100, that they were not far off the mark. And I think that's fair to say with Gold Coast. Like always, they'll be looking a little bit into the future with their list. So much of their talent is young. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how they go next year again if we have longer seasons, because that will be quite taxing on them. I don't really know how much there is to analyze about this game. Absolute dead rubber between two bottom five sides. Hawthorne maybe have a bit to play for with, you know, their ruthless list management in the last few years. Maybe players are scared of getting sacked, so they're going to pull out their best performance to try and get a spot on the list. That funny things do happen, I guess, at this time of year. Players have different motivations. That being said, I'm just going to say Gold Coast are better. Uh, I'm not super confident about this one, but um, I've got to go with a team that I just think is better, and that this week is Gold Coast. Next up, we have Sydney hosting Geelong at Metricon Stadium. Sydney obviously sitting in the bottom four, um, what has been a fairly long season for their supporters. Again, not used to a lack of success when being down this end of the ladder. They did have a bright spot a couple of weeks ago. They beat the Ds. Again, another team the Ds shouldn't have lost to, but did. Uh, but we do see these flashes of talent going through that team. we got Blakey playing in the midfield a little bit now, which is interesting. Lots to look forward to from a Sydney perspective and one of those plucky sides that can beat any team just about on their day. That being said, they're coming up against Geelong, who I wouldn't say have nothing to play for because as it sits, they are currently fifth. If they, if they lose this game, they will miss the top four. So this, again, is almost like a mini final for them. Uh, where a loss would see see them finishing fifth, and that would be bizarre because I still think they were maybe the second best team in the comp, uh, you have to say, based on last week's performance. Got torched by Richmond. As I said, Hawkins was uh, a little bit sort of triple teamed with the absence of Rowan. And while I think they have a good forward line, it was pretty evident that uh, Hawkins was going to be the main danger there, particularly with their uh, outs. That being said, Geelong really haven't put too much of a foot wrong at all this season. No real surprising losses. And uh, it's not unlike a good team to have a form slump later in the year. In fact, this is probably the best time of the year to have a little form slump, if that's what it was. I'm going to back in the Cats here. I think it would be silly not to. And I'm going to say they're going to win by a healthy 30 points. Fremantle then take on the Western Bulldogs in Cairns. And this is actually a surprisingly tough, a tough one to tip. So I've been talking about Fremantle's form. They've been really good over the last few weeks. I will have a quick cheat sheet look at their recent form. So a 11 goal win over North, a two goal win over the Ds. Following that North game, I'm a little less surprised that they beat the Ds uh, because we're really starting to see a new brand of football from Fremantle. This is a side as well that's been crippled by injuries the last few years, had so many key players out. The key mature plays, particularly in their back line with Hamling and Pierce in particular not available this year, barely got anything out of Hogan as well. And we're starting to see the young players rise up. Can you just imagine if they get all their key players back and Brayshaw and Chera keep playing to this level and Caleb Sarong? I think there is a lot to be excited about about Fremantle. And, you know, the week before that, again, they challenged Richmond. The scoreline didn't really flatter them by the end of it. But it was a fairly strong performance and a very solid last five weeks from Fremantle. Coming up against the Dogs, again, this is a mini final for them. Have to win to play finals as they sit ninth on the live ladder in front of me. They've been playing really good standard of football. Looked pretty good against the Hawks in Adelaide last week albeit not great opposition, but they still did what they needed to do. In the week before that, they were too strong against West Coast too. You know, you can talk a little bit about an unlucky score review, and that's probably what it was. Maybe a little bit unlucky. I didn't really, didn't really care. I thought it was a goal myself. Uh, that being said, Bulldogs completely outplayed the Eagles. Um, and while the Eagles were injury struck and stuff like that, I think the Dogs are starting to find their groove, similar to how they did last year. Now the challenge for them this year will be taking that form into week one of the finals, didn't work for them last year. Long story short, two good informed sides coming up against each other. If it weren't a mini final for the Dogs, I'd be inclined to tip a roughie here. But I don't think the Dogs will let this opportunity go. I'm expecting a good standard game if it's not too greasy. And uh, the Toby mclean -less Dogs will win this game by 13 points. All right, here we are for what I believe is the final game of the season. Collingwood versus Port Adelaide in what could be a little final preview in the week two of the finals, who knows? Certainly a bit to play for here. Well, I was going to say there's a bit to play for in this game, but on the live ladder, Collingwood sit seventh. But this is assuming they beat the Gold Coast Suns. Score is now 41 to 36. I probably should have waited to do this video after this game, but I'm on a tight schedule. This Collingwood Gold Coast game really does make or break 
uh, Collingwood's chances because I'm not too sure if they would knock off the power. Well, I mean, if they're struggling to knock off the Suns, even with you know the Goey back and Varco back and Trelaw back, then how are they going to topple the top of the ladder, Port Adelaide? I mean, crazier things have happened. Uh, but it is interesting to see this game and how that's going to shape the finals. But we'll assume Collingwood get up because they're five points up. One of the biggest inverse, adversity struck teams this season in terms of, you know, there was that COVID stuff at the start of the year, then their injuries and they're tough, you know, obviously one of many uh, Victorian sides that have had to spend a large chunk of the season in Queensland and not a lot's gone right for them. With their players back, will they regain the form back going into finals? Well, we, we saw an amazing Collingwood side in round one topple the dogs, and when I say topple, I mean annihilate. They look like an elite level team. But we know what their potential is when they're playing in form, but it's just been so long that I can't possibly, you know, rely on that. Coming up against Port, who, if you look at this, now currently sits second, assuming Brisbane win. So top spot is potentially going begging for them if they drop this game. Now, it's the difference between playing, between playing Richmond and Geelong. Either way, you get a double chance. It's kind of a toss-up, I guess, for them if there's a real benefit to that. But I think from a prior perspective, Port Adelaide will certainly want the minor premiership this year, and I'm sure that Ken Hinckley will be driving that hard in terms of motivating for this game. I'm excited for this game. It is certainly a mini-final when you look at what these two sides have to lose, in particular Collingwood, who could miss the finals um, if things don't go their way. That being said, I am inclined to tip Port Adelaide. You've got to respect the team that's been better this year. And even though I think Collingwood, I would say Collingwood have a better list overall. And if I was doing a season prediction for next year, I'd probably have Collingwood higher. The way things have panned out this year, it's hard to back them. And I'm going to say Port Adelaide, get the job done by a mere four points. Let's tip a thriller. So there you have it, guys. That is my final predicted ladder. Port Adelaide first, Brisbane second, Richmond third, and Geelong fourth. And I think that is a very good top four. I'd probably rearrange it. In fifth spot, you've got West Coast, who I think are clearly the fifth best side. There's probably a gap between the top four and fifth, and then another gap. Western Bulldogs sit rightfully in sixth. Collingwood sneak into the finals. And thankfully, the Saints sneak into that top eight. I'm glad for Saints fans. You deserve it. Melbourne in ninth. Couldn't quite get the results to fall their way. GWS in 10th. Not how sure how it's happened. I tipped GWS to beat St. Kilda. I thought that would actually launch the Giants into the finals. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've got that wrong. Evidently, I do. Fremantle sit in 11th spot, coming hard at the end of the year. No homo. Carlton 12th. Gold Coast 13th. Essendon rightfully in 14th, playing some horrible football uh, with a new coach going into 2021. Sydney, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and Adelaide are... Ah. Ah, bottom four. Now, I won't go through my finals predictions yet. That video will be coming in the future. But you've got Port Adelaide versus Geelong in week one. That is going to be hot with two Ts. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that if that's the way it eventuates. West Coast versus St. Kilda at Optus. Western Bulldogs versus Collingwood. A revenge match potentially for that round one game I just alluded to. And Brisbane versus Richmond at the Gabba. Can Richmond keep their streak of 15 wins over the Lions going? I'll be hoping that the Lions get the job done there. For argument's sake, let's go back to this Carl, uh, Collingwood Gold Coast game that's going on right now and flip it and say Gold Coast win. That has a pretty dramatic influence on the finals. Melbourne will make the finals if Collingwood drop this and Gold Coast up to 11th, just one uh, yeah, one win behind Collingwood. That is bizarre. So actually a fair bit riding on that game tonight. And uh, by the time I upload this, you'll all know the answer to this. Anyway, guys, this video has really dragged on, but it is finals, baby. And I'm back and I can't wait to get into it all with you. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel and I will see you in the coming videos. Thanks, guys.